Thank you. It's been a pleasure to be in this uh, hackathon this weekend where we've actually solved a problem. Uh, so I came here with, with a pitch at the start and our team uh, has been fantastic in, in implementing our change. Uh, the problem is that there are 10 million consent forms generated by the NHS every year. That is four and a half tons of paper alone, just, just the paper. Uh, and 500 clinician years spent actually consenting people. So, 43% uh, of patients don't actually understand the risks and the benefits uh, of a procedure following consent. Uh, we know that this can be done better, and we're going to try to provide solutions to all of this, as this can lead to significant litigation. Uh, so, we've developed iConsent. Uh, this is our app. So, you can scan a patient's barcode initially. And the MRI, MRI will then generate their patient's details immediately. This is something we use in our hospital at the moment. But for cataract surgery, it's a consent form one under local anesthesia. And the risks and benefits are pre-populated, but we can add more uh, as circumstances are different per person. Uh, this, they can go through the, the risks and uh, an explanation. Um, we've made a video on the... <laughs> couple of things that can happen in cataract surgery with some benefits um, and that's just all pulled through from the previous page the patient can take each of those boxes and sign most importantly uh, with an iPad or a stylus or, or, or their finger uh, and then this then generates a PDF so uh, we can also integrate to the NHS app so this is where it would be on the under my appointments and uh, upcoming procedures, you can sign your consent form. So, from the patient's view perspective, they'll have this uh, email to their, their app, so it's still integrated. Uh, and allows for a paper free system where they can then look at the video, the information at home, the specific to them. Uh, there's potential integration for EMR, Snowman CT, uh, and fire compliance. Uh, the videos are done by the individual surgeon, so this is local, uh, so they can put their own videos on there, uh, and it's Procedure specific for that patient. So, if you are at high risk of a, a corneal transplant following cataract, we can put that on there. Uh, and specifically for ophthalmology, it's accessible. Uh, we can use high contrast, uh, yellow or black features, uh, and barcode uh, in, in integration. So, thank you so much for your time. consented for something online before in a hospital setting. So how much of this is perhaps happening in, in some areas already? Yeah, so actually the reason why I've come up with this is because I've developed an app in-house which can, uh, you can consent on the phone uh, for taking pictures of patients and they can consent for teaching and publication. Uh, but there's no reason why this can't be rolled up to consent for one, two, three, and four of all procedures where a PDF is generated at the end of it. So uh, I think that if it's coming from a the top down, then we can significantly reduce waste and improve efficiency. That's that nice. Are there any more questions from the judges? I, uh, I have to admit, the last time I had a procedure in the NHS that was going through this process, and the consultant told me that it had a one in 6,000 chance of complications. So I asked him how his record was, whether he's had it once, so I was safe. <laughs> <laughs> um, he was very confused for a minute, but I had to admit that I knew that's not how statistics work. Uh, so from that perspective, uh, are there any drawbacks for the, the consultant or the clinician in, in um, taking this approach? Um, I, I think that this will actually um, improve the amount of time that you have with a, with a patient. So uh, if someone knows, is clued up about the procedure, then the time that you do have with them can be used most efficiently. Uh, drawbacks, um, uh, actually I feel like this is the way to go. I, I can't believe this hasn't happened already at a wide, wide scale approach. It's the reason why I came with this problem uh, at the start of this weekend. Great, thanks. Question for what are some of the risks that you can imagine happening with this app? So, uh, if there is a technological shutdown, uh, for example, uh, then it will mean that at the time of surgery, if you haven't printed off a consent form, then you'll have to move back into a paper form uh, like this. Um, equally though, the trusts that are digitally mature can print off, so this is just a PDF generator. So you can still sign on the app and then create a PDF that can get emailed to the patient, still reducing on the, the, the paper. 
uh, and still um, the, the improvement is efficiency. Yes. Question at the back. So just to get the last few thoughts, the deployment. So clearly, we set for this part we use in terms of allowing us to allow the patient to ask questions, but it's also a confirmatory check that the procedure should go ahead. And the checks take place on the ward, on the right of the theatres, in the operating room. How will it work with your PDF, unless you go to that? Uh, so you can, if it's integrated into the NHS app, then that's hopefully a mobile device that can be, be used by all, so the nursing staff and doctors uh, can then access and uh, and it's worth saying that paperless consenting does exist in, in several trusts and um, I worked in places where there's actually no physical copies of consent form. So paperless consenting is already a thing. Okay. Thank you very much. <laughs>